Harry's coming up from London on a visit. For long? Oh, well, he never says. Well, it's nice when they're home, though, isn't it? When will your Edward be let out? Let out? They'll be home from boarding school at the end of term. Oh, yes, yes, I used to say the same when our Harry got sent away. I wish I could get it into your head, Mrs Burkett. It isn't the same at all. Edward hasn't been sent away. He was chosen for the Cathedral Choir School on account of his very fine singing voice. Now, I that's a new one. I used to tell the neighbours that he was in a sanatorium on account of his chest. Well, I sincerely hope they believed you. Well, you have to think of something, don't you? Well, you and me, we're not the sort to have lads at boarding school. Them are for gentry what pay. Oh, don't worry, dear. I'm on your side. Police were always picking on our Harry in his young days. He's not been in trouble for years, though. I'm very glad to hear it. The reformer, she obviously did him good. Oh, he learnt better ways. He never gets found out now. Your Edward will come back with more sense. Our Edward will come back when his voice breaks. And I only allowed him to go away in the hope that he'll learn a lot of music and be well fed. Oh, please yourself. Boys will be boys, though, won't they? Hey, Dad, cheer up. It may never happen. No, that's what you think. All the cares of the world on his shoulders this morning. Listen, someone's got to have a word with Avril about, well, you know. Mm. I've had a rap over the knuckles to make it worse. What for? Oh, allowing a few dozen goods baggers to stand fully loaded in the siding all weekend. Well, it's not my fault, is it? Industry's working a five-day week. Does it matter if the goods aren't perishable? Of course it matters. The railway companies are desperately short of rolling stock. 54,000 wagons down on last year. And if the ones we've got can't get unloaded fast, they can't be a new shift in goods, can they? Well, I don't see what can be done about it. Well, I'm not keen on imposing penalty charges. It's just pushing prices up. I've been on to Halliwell's for a start to see if their works committee can arrange to unload outside normal working hours. I mean, weekend volunteers, probably. Wow. Now, there's a sight to cheer a dull day. Where has she come from? I don't know, but I can tell you where she's going. What, royal wedding? There isn't a Pullman seat to be had this week. Is she real, do you think? I haven't seen a woman as well turned out since I was old enough to take notice. It's a new look, isn't it? We have to ask Mum. Nice figure, eh? Yeah, you behave yourself. <laughs> I'm not on duty Saturday afternoon. What? If you want to volunteer. You what? To unload goods wagons. Oh. Oh, yeah. I know there's something bothering me. Good morning. What time did Harry Burkett bring you home? I don't know. Eleven-ish. Quarter past midnight. I thought you were asleep. It won't do. More work and no play makes Avril a dull girl. Less of your cheek. You're only 19. Your father and I don't want you racketing round town and mixing in bad company. Why are you so down on Harry? I don't trust him. Well, that's not fair. He's good fun. Look here, Avril. He's got plenty of money and he does no work. We don't know who his friends are in London, except for that Trevor, and he's a bookie. Mm, what if he is? Maybe he's liked him enough to marry him. He's going to get her a job as a mannequin, you know. Modelling London fashions. I hope Harry Burkett isn't suggesting the same for you. Mm, fat chance I'd have. I've never looked beautiful in my whole life. You were very pretty as Trish's bridesmaid. Oh, once. And the rest of the time, shabby and drabbing castos with no shape, thumping great square shoulders and clumping wedge heel shoes. Oh, Wellingtons and dungarees up to my neck in Calmock on Durrance Farm. I'm sick of not being glamorous. Your light farm worked well enough until Harry Burkett hit town. Next news is you're hanging around milk bars and amusement arcades with beetroot juice making do for lipstick. Oh, where's the harm, Mum? It's shady and downright common. Well, you're just old-fashioned. I've had me say that you'll oblige your father and me by finding another respectable job and as quickly as possible and by being home early of an evening. <laughs> I'm sorry. I oh, know, love. I'm sorry too. I can understand how you get fed up. You've had precious little to get excited about since you left school. It's a matter of fact. Gosh, that's lovely. Is it corded velvet? Like it? Oh, I do. Good. 
was going to be a Christmas present. And he was going to be. I mean is, if you're so impatient to look glamorous, I'll make it up for you straight away once you've chosen your pattern. Mum, you must have had to queue for hours. It's beautiful. Oh, such a lot. Well, I thought we'll not stint ourselves. It's the first time we've had of our having anything to wear that won't look like an overall. Or be best hidden underneath one. Do you think there'd be enough for me to have a new look? Hey, my name's Mabel Hodgkins, not Christian Dior. Oh, you could do it. We'll see. Come on, stand up while I check your measurements. We're so underfed, you might have lost four inches all round since I last made you a frock. Would I have to wait till Christmas to wear it? I don't see why. Won't be any surprise left. You're early buying presents. I did all my shopping before the crisis budget. I knew purchase tax would go up on luxuries. Are we all having luxuries? I'll give you no more secrets away. <laughs> For my luxury, I'd like a new look with a slim bodice, a tiny waist and a lovely long full skirt with yards and yards of swishy material. Right, young lady. Then you'll be much too elegant to hang around the amusement arcades, won't you? Autumn 1947. Here's something to boost everyone's morale. The new look, launched in Paris last spring, is spreading to our high streets. It's been a struggle these last few years with clothing coupons and shortages, but now women can look elegant and feminine again. And the country looks forward to the happy occasion when Princess Elizabeth will marry Lieutenant Philip Mountbatten. London prepares to celebrate the royal wedding. And of course, the young bride has been allowed a few extra coupons for her dress. In New York, it has been agreed that American dollar aid to Europe will be increased through the Marshall Plan. In return for vital materials to help them eat, work and survive, Europe's docks will be busy handling goods for export. The widespread construction of prefabs is easing the problem of homelessness, the worst of post-war miseries. Now over 130,000 more workers are being engaged on export production and there are hopeful signs of a recovery at last. Mr. Hodgkins. Oh, you're back. Oh, that's right. I've lost count. Oh, well. Was it interesting? Oh, I found it a bit much to take in. <laughs> we aren't likely to have a new town sprung on us here, though. Right. What's in there, then? Cameras. On the way overseas via Liverpool. It's the latest thing. Could do with a new camera myself. You didn't come to the Britain Can Make It exhibition with us, did you? No. I remember you going. Oh, it was marvellous. The Victorian Albert Museum, like Aladdin's cave. Stuck with luxury goods. It proved Britain could make it all right. Good old dear. Britain still can't have it. Bye. Sorry. Yoo-hoo! Good afternoon. Oh, I did mine yesterday. I noticed. On a Sunday. Oh, no offence intended, Mrs. Hodgkins, but I had to get her in, didn't I? When are you off to London? Oh, tomorrow. We've been well. Oh, he's a good boy, my Harry. Made sure his old mum will have a decent view. He's not going back yet himself, then? Oh, no, no. He has more business here to see to. He's made a tidy bit out of this wedding. Quick off the mark, eh? Hiring an office in Parliament Square for the day. Yes, you did tell me. And I was been charging £35 each for a window seat overlooking the procession. Dear me, that was last week. He hung on to most of them. Harry's no fool. They're fetching £150 each now. Except the one I'll be sitting in, of course. You'll have to excuse me. I've got to get this lot iron before tea. Having something nice, are you? Beans. We're having a side of bacon. Beautiful it is. All lean and juicy. Well, I must be going. Ta-ta! I hope it chokes her. Mabel. Oh, it's all right for you, Arthur. She's not you hooing you every day. Boast, boast, boast. Well, I know perfectly well that for every pig that makes it to a bacon factory, there's three being sold on the black market. Uh, oh, no. If someone introduce you to a nice plump side of bacon off the rack... I'd be suspicious. You'd buy it. I'd buy it. Aye. And I'd pay a whacking price for it. Just like I'm paying double for potatoes off a barrow that's always lurking at the back of the bus station. Please don't do much about it. And they won't. 
so long as honest citizens like us are prepared to pay those prices. Well, it's shameful. Whenever their Harry's home for a week or two, they live like lords next door. Bought you the paper. Thanks. I'll see what jobs there are. Oh, I'm not hinting. Just thought you might like to read about the wedding arrangements. Sounds like Norman Hartnell's going to make her look a treat. Ooh. Hey, watch where you're going, Annie Burkett. Oh, yes. Well, uh, morning, Mr. H. Busy day ahead. Oh, you know me. Always on a go here, there, everywhere. Might be more restful doing an ordinary job of work. I have to keep the customers happy, don't I? Well, I must have missed the train. Harry, there's a tale out about you. Tale? What tale? This tale. Just thought you might like to know. Sure, best quality merchandise, that is. Here. Present for your lady wife. Well, mustache before some other fella grabs me pick. <laughs> Why have you been going out with Harry Burkett? You weren't here. Well, only for a week. Well, I'm not sitting at home every evening while you're out at conferences having a good time. It was hard work. There's a lot to learn about new towns. Well, they may even be the answer. I not fancy living in one, though. Why not? I bet they'd be really smart. Well, I think towns ought to grow, slowly, a generation at a time. Not to be set up artificially all at once. Little places like Stevenage. Where? Oh, you won't have heard of any of them. Uh, Stevenage, Crawley, Harlow, Hemel, Hempstead. Well, it'll be strange in a little village like Acliffe, for instance, a handful of families saying hello to 45,000 new neighbours all of a sudden. It wouldn't be all of a sudden. Not at the rate houses get built. It'll take time. And money, you're right. Even a prefab, the cost is nearly double what it used to be. Who'd work in housing? You're just as fed up as I was last week. What are you doing this evening? Going out with you. <sighs> Good. Oh. Hello, are you off? Nah, not yet. It's empty, is this? Want to listen to town? Won't say no. How are you managing for petrol? I'm keeping my fingers crossed. OK, so they've abolished the basic allowance, but I'll put in for some. I mean, if I'm on late or very early duty, I can't use public transport, can I? Not in the middle of the night. I always look after my mates. Do you know that? You want petrol, leave it to me, Sonny Jim. I've got the best contacts in England, I have. just how you feel. They're a lovely couple. I'm very happy for them too. Oh, don't miss it, Daphne. It's this blessed onion. Selling. You can have four. Help yourself. And these are for you. A quid, OK? Oh. What do I want with two gallons of fertiliser at that price? It's petrol. Are you sure? Would I tell you a lie? You better hide it. Listen, I haven't got a quid. I tip up most of my wages to mum for housekeeping. Ten bob at you, then. If you can do me a favour. You're on. I might want to leave in a hurry. When? Can't say. But I'll probably be glad of a lift to catch a train before daylight tomorrow. And then the procession, the grenadier guards, and uh, foreigners in cars flying flags of all nations. 
and Mr. Churchill and Queen Mary and the household cavalry and the Queen was in a glass coach. And I thought, funny, they've left the King behind. They'd be with the bride, last of all. And we caught a glimpse. Just as they were coming on in right forward and there was this splitting noise. Me new suit and all. Not well made. Perhaps you're too big for it. Oh, no, it were a good fit till I leaned forward. By the time I pulled myself together, she'd gone past. Oh, what a shame. Oh, worth going now. Oh, I had a lovely day. Here, you're fond of needlework, aren't you? You might like putting it to rights for me. All right? Hi, Lawrence. I'm here. Good grief. You look absolutely... Well, gosh, Avril, where have you been? Fixing myself up with a job. Boots. Boots? What kind of boots? Boots the chemist knit with. Shop assistant. There are dozens of jobs going, but I can't see that one the most. Oh, you look... I can't get over it. The trouble is, I'm not warm enough for a picnic. Can we have our dinner in a cafe? You want to show off a bit? I was going to slip Mum's best coat on when I collected it from the dry cleaners. But guess what? What? It's been stolen. Stolen? Well, how? A whole lorry load sent for cleaning last week. All gone missing. It's clothes worth £15,000 and 80,000 coupons. Including Mum's best coat. What a rotten trick. She'll get compensation. Oh, well, it beats me. Hey, come on, all my dinner break won't be long oh, enough. Lawrence, do you mind not walking with me? Snob. Too grand, are you? I didn't mean that. Just for fun. You follow behind and count how many heads turn between here and the car down. All right. She probably didn't know, but she's been wearing it with a dry cleaning ticket still in. The number's only four away from the number on mine. It must have been in the same lorry load. Harry. We ought to tell the police. You want to? We've got to go on living next door to the Burkitts. Aye. It's a difficult one, this. And what with our accepting nylons and bananas? Well, he was being neighbourly. Oh, let's face it, Arthur. He's a common thief. Oh, now, we've no real proof of that. He's certainly a bit of a spiff. Not all young men are like our Jimmy, settling back into steady work after the war. There's no excuse for crime. Not with half a million jobs waiting to be filled. I was fond of that coat. Don't worry, love. The law will catch up with Harry. Jimmy took him for a London train this morning. Well, then. Harry will have to register in January anyway. Spivs and drones, they'll be forced to take useful work. Things will improve soon, Mabel. There are signs. When the country's on its feet, there'll be no need for the black market.